Ladies and gentlemen, by transcription, we take you now behind the scenes of a police headquarters in a great American city, where under the cold, glaring lights will pass before us the innocent, the vagrant, the thief, the murderer. This is the lineup. <laughs> just came in. I put him over on the end. Oh, okay. over there. Yeah, yeah thanks. Uh, you didn't meet Burkhead, did you? Oh, hey, I heard you were coming with us. Glad to see you. Same here. Hmm? How'd you leave him at University Division? Oh, I said they'd arrest me for impersonating a police officer if I ever stepped in the precinct. <laughs> <laughs> hey, is uh, Carney still holding down the desk? Oh, sure. Hey, you know, we went through the academy together, Dick and I. Yeah, so he said. We better get out. Yeah. Well, I'll uh, see you upstairs. Hey, and uh, congratulations. Thanks. He's a nice guy. Yeah. Oh, Hello, Lieutenant. Hello, oh, Mr. Winston. This is Sergeant Burke. He'll be working with us from now on. I'm glad to meet you, Sergeant. How do you do? Fine, thanks. Well, we picked up a couple of people that might be possibilities, Mr. Winston. At least they fit the general description of the man who held you up. I uh, sure hope so. Uh, how many do we have to look at? Mm, 25 or 26. Oh. Uh, do you smoke, Mr. Winston? Oh, thanks, Sergeant. May I have your attention, please? You people out there on the other side of the wire, may I have your attention, please? Thank you. My name is Cogger, Sergeant Pete Cogger. I'll explain the lineup to you. Each of the suspects you will see will be numbered. I'll call off a number, their name, and the charge. If you have any questions or identifications, please remember the number assigned to the prisoner as I call his name. If you're sure or not too sure of the suspect, have him held. Now, the questions I ask these suspects are merely to get a natural tone of voice, so do not pay too much attention to their answers as they often lie. All right, bring on the line. Come on, boys, keep it moving. Let's hurry it up there. That's it, all the way over to this side of the stage. Now spread out and stand facing the audience. Hands at your sides, keep looking straight ahead. It's a long way to the back of the room, so when you answer the questions, talk out so the people back there can hear you. Number one, William Alexander, burglary. Up to the circle, William. Yes. Hands out of your pockets. Oh, I forgot. Where do you live, William? 418 Race Street. How long you been in this city? About uh, six months, I reckon. Come here last September. Oh, may make it seven months. Where you from? Beaumont, Texas. Were you arrested with anybody, William? No, sir. You have a car? No, sir, I was walking. Any weapons? One. Well, pistol, knife, what? A little old 32. Revolver or automatic? Revolver. No count, though. Firing pins all rusted down. That the weapon you had in the grocery store? You hear me? Yes, sir. Well? Don't know nothing about no grocery store, Sergeant. All right, slide on down the end. Number two, George Vince, Grand Theft. Where do you live? In New York City. Last address you slept before you were arrested. Monaco Motel. Where's that? Well, down the know. It's on some highway somewhere. Stand at attention just like you're in the Army. I wish I was. What? Uh, well, nothing, nothing. Look, all of you, pay attention. I don't want any clowning around up there. Just answers to the questions and nothing else. You got that? You own a car? Yeah. What make? Caddy. You mean a Cadillac? Yeah. Well, say it. I own a Cadillac. The year? Uh, 51 convertible. Color? Blue. What kind of work do you do? Nothing. Come on, talk up, George. Well, I'm out of work right now. What kind of work did you do? How'd you live? I dealt cards over in Vegas for four or five years. Dealing cards, huh? That's your profession? Yeah. Any weapons on you when you're arrested? No weapons. According to the report, you were picked up at the Broadmoor Country Club, is that right? Yeah. Who was with you at the time? A girl, Susan Wright. She told us her name was Marjorie Kennedy. Well, she's allowed to tell you anything. I ought to hear some of the things she told me. Okay, okay. Number three, Harold Sorrington, robbery. Over to the circle. Ah, the light hurts my eyes. Then close them and tell us where you live. 6644 East Hoover Street. What's your business? Diecast operator. Where were you arrested? On Alameda Street. When? Night before last. Anybody arrested with you? Yeah. Frank Jensen. I seen him in the other room when I was changing my clothes. 
Frank Jensen, number 12. How long have you known Frank Jensen? All my life. What's funny? Nothing. Why the smile? Nothing. You have a permit to carry a gun? No. What about the cold automatic? Didn't get that, Sergeant. The 38 automatic. Weren't you carrying it when the officers arrest you, Harold? No. You know where it came from, then? I found it somewhere, I guess. Did you see him find it? Yeah. Well, where'd they find it? Sort of lying on the ground. Did you throw it there? I told you I wasn't carrying any gun. How old are you? I asked how old you are. 19. All right, Harold. Number four, Roger Weinberg, breaking and entering. Where do you live, Roger? Sorry, I couldn't identify any of those men. Yeah, so we I'd sure like to get this Berg, Mr. Winston. He's held up three other bars in the past month. Mm, got a match? Yeah, here you are. Oh, and I pulled some cards that look good. You got time to run down to the mug files? Yeah, it's a little late right now, Lieutenant. My wife's waiting. Uh, how about tomorrow? Could you come in tomorrow morning? Yeah, yeah, I guess so. Sure would appreciate it. Maybe you'll be able to spot him there. I'd know if I saw him again, all right, even on a picture. Yeah, I'll be in tomorrow. Fine. I uh, have a card for you to fill out. It won't take a minute. Okay. Well, I'll see you later, Burke. I'll be in Captain Waldo's office. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thanks, Mr. Weston. Oh, don't mention it. Five nine six two five East Fuller Place Department. Hi, Ben. Bill. Relax. Yeah. <clears throat> what do you think of the kid? Burke? Yeah. Mm, fine. I'll keep him with me a couple of weeks and then let him pair up with Quine. Ash is due for vacation. Sounds good. Cigarette? Oh, thanks. I put out this supplementary after I went over Winston's statement. Oh? His complaint might help a little more than Shannon's and Vigran's. It's worth a try, anyhow. Yeah. Same guy held up all three places. No question about the M.O. or the description. Winston has one of those record players in his place where you put in a nickel and call up the girl. I see. Now, Winston remembered hearing the machine play Poor Butterfly just before he was held up. The place was crowded and lots of noise going on around. Normally, he wouldn't pay any attention to what was being played, but... He claims he remembers that song pretty well because it's an old one. He's pretty sure it was played more than once that night. I mentioned it to the other victims, and all of them remembered hearing the same song just before they were knocked over. They have the same kind of music systems? Mm-hmm. And the uh, people at the jukebox company gave me some help, too. One of the girls who makes those calls remembered somebody throwing in a quarter and asking for poor butterfly, one that played five times. I've got a man covering down there in case the request comes in again. They can spot where it comes from? Well, the area, anyhow. There's 157 of those systems in bars and cocktail lounges around town. All the beat patrolmen got the sheet this morning. Might be nothing, but when again, he's picked on a place using that kind of machine all three times. Funny, huh? Yeah. Oh, uh, Crockett sent this up on the gun. Mm hmm According to the description, it sounds like he's using a 763 Mauser. Hope it doesn't go off in somebody's face. Now, this M.O. gets me, Ben. He picks himself a bar, has a couple of drinks, and listens to the record machine. When the crowd thins out, he shoves a gun in the bartender's face, hands him a paper sack, and tells him to fill it up. Mm, this baby's been around all right. Plenty cool. He's had good luck so far. Well, it'll be our turn pretty soon. Well, we'll keep on it. Yeah. Oh, uh, Ben. Hmm? You go down to the jukebox company yourself? Yeah, why? How about it? Those girls who ask you what number you want to hear, they as pretty as they sound? Yeah. Yeah, I guess they are, Bill. I always wondered about them. Hello, Lieutenant. Hi. Hey, Ben. Hi. Why the grin? Take a look here. <laughs> well, I'll be done. <laughs> well, what do you think of it? Made of myself? Well, it's some bad. What's it made of? Tin. Yeah. <laughs> Burke said he didn't feel like a policeman when they took him out of uniform. 
Nobody can see his badge. Well, anybody can sure see this thing. Yeah, that's what I figured. Gonna give it a burke for a gag. <laughs> you know, back at OCS, we used to make bars out of cardboard, and guys would wear them around all day. Yeah. Well, uh, wait a minute. Hello, Mr. Guthrie. Yeah. Wait. <clears throat> yeah, that's better. 1410. Right. Got a break, Pete. Burke was with Winston on the files this morning. He picked one. Hey. Name of Dallas Kenyon. Record a mile long. Released three months ago. Registered? Yeah. Got a place out on Humboldt Street. Hmm. All right. I guess I'll wait to give Burke his badge. Clotting up. Yeah. Bert. Hmm. Hi, Ben. Pete. Hi, Hi. Bert. Quine's got the alley. Kenyon's apartment on the ground floor, 102. Walk by the window. Somebody's stirring around in there. Mm -hmm. Okay. You take it here, Pete, and I'll go in and get him. Yeah. Right. Ben. I was just thinking. No, oh, what? This is the right guy. Burke might think he's got the soft end of things. Well, you mean? Isn't this his first case? No, 102. Yeah. Mm, music lover. Mm, so they say. For Dallas Canyon, uh, this is apartment. Yeah, that's right. He lives here. Well, is he home? No. Are you Mrs. Kenyon? <laughs> no, I'm just a friend of his. I live across the hall. Well, when do you expect him back? I don't know. Well, we'd like to wait for him. Police. Oh, come in. Thanks. Thanks. What's the trouble, officers? Dallas isn't in any trouble, is he? Mm, just routine. Take a look, Pete. Yeah. Hey. What's your name, miss? Rita Fisher. It's out there on the box, but my apartment's across the hall, 104. I don't think you have any right to come in here and start looking around, even if you're a policeman. We'd like to know what you're doing in his apartment. I just come to use a record machine, that's all, just to play his machine. Hey, what is this? How long have you known Dallas Canyon? Well, just a little while, two months maybe. Can't you tell me what this is all about? Has he done something? We don't know. You sure you don't know when he'll be coming back? No. He brought the keys to my car and said he'd be back later on. Told me I could use his record machine if I wanted to. He does that lots of times. Look, I'm not involved in anything with him. He's too old for me. I hardly know him at all. But he let you use his apartment. I let him borrow my car. Just friends. I don't want to get involved in anything. He's got a nice set there. You can see for yourself. I bought some new records. Have you I... ever been in trouble, Miss Fisher? No, you can check that, too. Never been in trouble of any kind. Mm-hmm. Where do you work? Richburger Drive-In. You can call there. They'll tell you I'm okay. Hey, Ben. Hmm? And be careful. Dallas would hate to see anything happen to that record. It's his favorite. Yeah, I bet it is. Well, what is it, Pete? Poor butterfly. We'd like to look at your apartment, Miss Fisher. Will you take us over there, please? Well, yeah, I suppose so, but I still don't see why you're so interested in me. Lord, I just happened to be here when you showed up. If I hadn't been here, you'd never even known I knew him. Well, we have to check into everything. It won't take long. What's he done? Can't you tell me what he's done while you're so anxious to get a hold of him? Don't I have a right to know something? We'll let you know everything. Hey, that's our front. Let's go. Ben, Kenyon drove up and pulled a gun when Burke went over to the car. Headed out on 14. You head? Yeah, just nicked. Burke needs help. Yeah. Do that. Uh, do what you can, Pete. Yeah. Uh, you come right. with me. Any of you people I don't... Come on. Eleven A, request ambulance. Fourteen ten Humboldt Street. Ambulance one four one oh Humboldt Street, eleven A. Are we clear? All clear. Stand by all units, frequency four. Eleven A, go ahead. Code three, suspect proceeding west on 14th from Humboldt. Uh, what kind of car do you have? The black Ford, 49 sedan. Black Ford sedan, 49. And license number? Uh, 
it's a uh, uh, two J four five seven two. Two James four five seven two. This state eleven A out. All right, you stay here. All right. All right, let me through here. Yeah. Let me through, please. How's Burke doing, Pete? Not so good, Ben. Huh? He just died. How's your Army IQ? To be prepared for war is one of the most effectual means of preserving peace. These words reflect our current military policy of power for peace, of an army always ready. But do you remember the great American who made that remark? The occasion was a speech to Congress outlining this man's thoughts about the future of our country. And the date, January 8th, 1790. The man, President George Washington. Today, the men and women of our modern army are proof of the first Commander-in-Chief's wisdom. Only strength can ensure peace. Get to know your army. It's a proud heritage. Captain Waldo's car. Yeah. Jim? Yeah? Got the hutch out of my way home. How many cars were there? Well, regulars and public assemblies. 37 and 18 were right in line when you call one out. Car every intersection along the park front. Alley's all covered. We're using the command car. You'll have to cross the viaduct to get on any highway. Yeah, men at both ends, stopping everything. Go house to house if you have to, Ben. This rain isn't going to help much. Well, I hope we get him before it gets any worse. Yeah. Ben. Yo. Just came over. Wine found the car. Seat. Burke must have hit him. Uh, anybody see anything? Well, no, Murph and Prescott are covering from 10th Avenue. Three other cars in from the viaduct side. May turn up somebody. Pretty lonely place, mostly warehouses. They aren't going to be easy. Mm, he's got them on the open street. How far do the warehouses run? We've got four blocks straight across. Cars all along 11. Mm, he can't move very far. Unless he jumps in the drink. Yeah, he might do it, too. Want to get Harbor Division to get some boats along here? Yeah, sure. Now, let's see. Ten men to a street, five men to a side. Work it toward the water. No shooting if you can help it. Right. Now, wait a minute. Nothing hurt? No. Now, how do you feel? Mad. Okay, get going. Yeah. All right. All right. How's it look, Ben? The whole area's surrounded, but it's not going to be any cinch. I'll get some lights over here. Almost five now. Yeah. You gonna stick around? I'd like to, but I have to get over to the west side. Oh? Yeah. Burke's mother. Somebody has to tell her what happened. It'll take us a month that we have to go over every one of those warehouses. We'll spend a month if we have to. Oh, nuts. What? Well, my cigarettes are all wet. Oh, here. Yeah. Thanks. Hey, somebody's waving. Yeah. Well, he's all dressed for the rain, anyhow. Yeah. I get the window. Hey, uh, hey, you fellas are police officers, aren't you? Yeah, that's right. Well, my name's Charlie Adam. I live up over that building there. Seen all the commotion on 10th Street. What's it all about? Mm, just looking for somebody. That uh, fellow in the black car? Did you see him? Sure, about 15 minutes ago. I thought there was something funny about him. I was going to report it. He uh, pulled up in that car and jumped out and fell like maybe he was drunk. Then he got up and ran. Uh, where'd he run to? Which way? Over there, out on that dock. Ain't supposed to be using it, though. The company property, you know. Okay. Jump in. Uh, sure. What's he done? Kill somebody? Yeah. Police officer. No. Well, he ain't gonna get far. He'd have to come back along here or go on down the ramp. And I know he ain't come back this way. Now, where does the ramp lead to? Under this here dock. There's a little big landing there for loading when the tide's out. At high water, we load uh, right from topside here. Where does it come out? 
nowhere. It runs back maybe, oh, 100 yards to the street. Solid concrete landings on that side, and some pile retainings over there. Just muck and mud. Lots of rats. I see. Well, thanks a lot. Hey, you better wait here, Mr. Adam. You okay? Slippery. Watch out. Right. Well, what Mr. Adams says is true. The only place he could run to would be back under the pilings. Yeah. Hmm. Easy. Yeah. Oh, what a sweet-smelling place. To get back. I'm okay. All right, cover it. I'll get the others. Yeah. Yeah, you were right. Did you hear anybody? No. Klein? Klein, this is Ben. Yeah. He's under the dock. We're gonna have to get him out. Right. Kenyon, you don't have a chance to get away. We know you're hurt. There's a doctor up here waiting to treat you. You better come up before it gets any worse. Is this thing carrying? Well, the speaker's hanging over the side. Put your hands above your head and walk straight toward the light. You've got five seconds. Well, I guess he doesn't want to cooperate. Yeah. Uh, maybe he passed out? He wasn't passed out five minutes ago when he threw those slugs at us. One more chance, Kenyon. Are you coming out? I'm coming out. Okay. Right toward the light. With your hands up. Okay. Lower the rope. Okay. You see him? Not yet. You better stand back. <laughs> Everybody okay? Here's another life. Huh. Okay. Let's get him out of there. Hey, Ben. Look. Huh? Stop raining. Lineup, starring Bill Johnstone as Lieutenant Ben Guthrie, was written by E. Jack Newman, with music by Eddie Dunstetter. Featured in tonight's cast were Jack Moyles as Sergeant Pete Carger, with Joel Samuels, Scott Douglas, Ed Begley, Virginia Gregg, Dick Ryan, Sam Edwards, Howard McNear, and Bert Holland. <laughs> This is the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.